24-hour curfew relapsed in Plateau as GOC meets conflicting parties. Four policemen feared killed by bandits in Zamfara. Doctors suspend warning strike in Nasarawa state. And on the foreign scene, Mauritania appeals for Mali to return to the G5 Sahel organization. These are the headlines on Trust News Update this hour. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. And now the details. Plateau State Governor Caleb Murfuang has relaxed the 24-hour curfew imposed in Mangu local government area of the state. Movement is now restricted between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. A statement signed by the Director of Press and Public Affairs to the Governor, Yang Beri, said that the decision to relax the curfew was reached after a review of security situation in the area by the State Security Council. In the meantime, the Commander Operation Safe Heaven and General Officer Commanding GOC uh, 3 Division of the Nigerian Army, Major General Abdul Salam Abubakar, on Monday, held an emergency meeting with all stakeholders from Mangu local government area of the state. The GOC called for the meeting to broker peace between Fulani and Mogavu communities following the incessant attacks and killings in various communities. Armed bandits on Monday night killed four policemen serving on the Bungudu local government area of Zamfara State. The policemen were on routine patrol along Bungudu Gusau Road when the armed bandits ambushed and opened fire on them. A spokesperson for the Zamfara State Police Command, ASP Yazid Abubakar, confirmed the latest attack. The res a resident of Bungudu town, Ibrahim Bungudu, also confirmed that four of the policemen were killed during the attack. The resident said that the bandits also shot one person at Taigeru village under the Furufuri district of Bunguru local government area. Now he said that the bandits attacked the policemen around midnight, killing four of them manning a checkpoint. Niger State Governor Mohamed Umaru Bago has launched Operation Flush as a first step towards addressing security challenges bedeviling the state. He also donated 20 operational vehicles to security operatives to help curb crimes in MENA, the state capital and its environs. Bago expressed concern over the security challenges faced in the state capital, saying that the vehicles would facilitate adequate patrol to the city. The governor advised the commissioner of police in the state to ensure that security operatives make proper use of the vehicles. Bago also announced a war against sales of illicit drugs, warning that any building found housing drug dealers will be confiscated and demolished. The branding of the car is Operation Flush. It is intended to flush all uh, hoodlums and criminal and criminal elements within the metropolis and also in the state. And again, we have realized that a lot of drug trafficking and drug related issues are happening in MENA. We have given them a marching order. First, anybody that is found uh, selling drugs, uh, his uh, building should be confiscated and brought down. We are going to give zero tolerance to uh, drugs. And therefore, anybody that is warehousing drug dealers or cartel in his own premises is at his own risk. We appreciate and we salute the governor of Niger State for the provision of these uh, 20 operational vehicles, 12 for the police and uh, the other ones for other security agencies. And in our own uh, part now, we have gotten something and uh, we are going to showcase our, our activities, our actions. So Nigeria should be expecting total commitment to flush, flushing out of these uh, criminal elements in, in the metropolis. On behalf of Niger State Government, we want to commission these vehicles uh, for the operations. This is your choice of operation in MENA metropolis. These vehicles must be used within every corner from Paiko until you get to Beach.
The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has tendered documents before the Governorship Petition Tribunal sitting in Kaduna. The documents presented before the Tribunal on Wednesday by INEC include Form EC8A, EC8B and EC8C of polling units of nine local government areas in Kaduna State. Councils to INEC, Ubasani and APC all raised objections to the admissibility of the documents tendered in court. Meanwhile, councils to the PDP and the APC addressed journalists shortly after the court session, even as the tribunal adjourned sitting to Tuesday. Um, so, um, summarily, the matter was adjourned to today for uh, further presentation of uh, documents. You know, the arrangements here at the tribunal, all documents, um, the way it was scheduled, all documents will be tendered and then before you begin to call witnesses. So I think it commenced sometime, um, um, sometime no, last week, and then it was adjourned again today for further um, presentation of documents uh, uh, for adoption, which were done largely today, even though we we're not able to conclude them today because of some issues that arose. Well, our argument is that uh, what ordinarily should come before the tribunal a certified true copy of public documents. And the reason is very clear. When the document is a public document, everyone else other than the parties before the tribunal here will be entitled to have certified true copy when they apply and pay the necessary fees. Okay? But since uh, there's uh, issued a uh, subpoena for them to bring them, and they have brought them, but there's nothing we can do but to follow the order of the tribunal. Because the subpoena is, is in the class of an order. Now, despite widespread speculation about the fate of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, state chairman of the party have reaffirmed their confidence in his leadership. The APC national chairman met on Monday with state chairman of the party and the APC secretariat in Abuja, to discuss developments in the party a few days after he met with state governors. Senator Adamu informed the state chairman that the NEC meeting was postponed due to the absence of President Tinubu, who traveled out of Nigeria for the 63rd ordinary session of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Eco Eco Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. Do Nigerians stand up to support the party? the way they have done, for us to get the kind of results we are all talking about. A lot has been expected from us as a party, you know, from our uh, manifesto. It's clear we made promises, and uh, it behoves on us to see whatever we can do to ensure that we deliver on our promises. This is a moment where rumors and blackmail can thrive. But as a party, there is only one APC. And we came again in solidarity to say we are strongly behind our national chairman and the National Working Committee. It's complete rumor, because whatever you may have heard about uh, board membership, those letters were addressed to the state chairman. And every state chairman is loyal to his governor. And where there are no governors, they are worthy and very loyal to the stakeholders of that state. There is no such crisis. In fact, we must commend Mr. President for playing to his promise of saying that state chairmen should be captains of this ship. Good. And I can assure you that letters were addressed to us. The Sokoto State Governor, Dr. Ahmed Aliu, has set up a commission of inquiry to investigate some of the activities of his predecessor. The commission is saddled with the responsibilities of examining all land allocations and government properties sold by the administration of Amin Waziri Tambwal. The commission was set up in line with the powers conferred on the governor by section 1, subsection 2 of the Commission of Inquiry Law Cap 33 Laws of Sokoto State, 1996. Press Secretary to the Governor, Abubakar Bawa, explained that the committee will be led by the retired Justice M.A. Pindiga uh, with Nasiru Muhammad Binji serving as the Secretary of the Commission. Other members of the committee include Jacob E. Ochidi, 
SAN, Usman Abubakar and Lema Sambowali. The committee will, among others, investigate all land allocations and assets sold or auctioned under the administration of Governor Aminu Waziri Tambua. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Sokoto State, Dr. Ahmed Ali Sokoto, has approved the constitution of the Commission of Inquiry into the auction of government's assets, land syndication, and other related matters, sales and auctions of government houses by the immediate past administration. The setting up of the Commission of Inquiry is in pursuance of the powers conferred with the Governor by Section 1 2 of the Commission of Inquiry Law, CAP 3 3 of Sokoto State, 1996. The Commission has membership as follows Honorable Justice M.A. Pindiga, retired chairman, Chief Jacob E. Ochidi, SAR, member, Alaju Smakawaka, member, Lema Samuwani, Esquire, member, and Nasumama Biji, Esquire, as secretary. The Nigerian Medical Association Nasarawa State Chapter has suspended its five-day warning strike, giving the state government two weeks ultimatum to address all their demands. The association had embarked on strike following the inability of the state government to implement promotions for some of its members for up to nine years and annual increment for over 12 years. Briefing journalist immediately after its emergency Congress meeting in Lafia, the state capital, the state chairman, Dr. Peter Atta, stated that they resolved to suspend the five-day warning strike to lessen the sufferings of the citizens of the state. Atta said that the association had directed its members to resume work immediately in the state to save lives. You're watching the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. We take a look at recipe for managing convulsion in children. Details and more after the break. Just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. Now, a recap of our top stories. For me, I have my eight years, and uh, I think uh, I have enough. A challenge to serve in line with the oath I have taken today. Commander of the Board of Directors of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation. And an end. Don't go state residents are appealing to stakeholders in the oil sector to consider the plight of killing in Moravan, Jama, Avru, uh, Okaru, in Plateau State. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that I have what it takes to turn Nigeria around. I of FCT residents on the need to give Gen Z a proper orientation. When a country organizes a credible election, both the government and the opposition
welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Here's a look at the top stories. 24-hour curfew relapsed in Plateau as GOC meets conflicting parties. Four policemen feared killed by bandits in Zamfara State. Moving on, Nigerian car dealers are calling on the federal government to further implement healthier reforms that will ensure that they remain in business. They made the call while speaking with Trust TV in Lagos. Victoria Tokolo, who visited the car dealers, brings us more details as reported from our studio. The appeal from car dealers is coming amid soaring prices worsened by the floating of the dollar and the removal of fuel subsidy in the country. As part of addressing these challenges, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu recently ordered the suspension of vehicle import tax across the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT. Laudable as the policy is, it is yet to start yielding results as car dealers continue to lament the dwindling state of car importation in Nigeria. Although most car dealers and clearing agents are too angered to speak on camera, Anthony Ike, a car dealer, says for the past eight months, he has not imported more than two cars, adding that within the last one month, they have only sold one to two vehicles. He added that cars that were being sold for 1.5 million naira now go for 4 million naira, while those that were hit at all sold for 15 million naira are now being sold for 28 million naira. Years back, I do import 50 to 100 cars. But with the policies on ground, it's not encouraging. We have cars here that are sitting down for two years, three years. We have not been able to sell. And government is imposing heavy tax day by day, year by year. It's not good for the masses. We are not really in business. We are just, when the day breaks, whatever you see, you take it as you see it. You understand? So the policy is not too nice for us, those of us in the, this business. Frank Okenwa, a car dealer in Ikeja, lamented that with tariffs increasing on a daily basis and the price of vehicles on a sustained upward trend, it has become very difficult for them to stay in business because patronage has drastically been reduced. The challenge are, you know, paying the tariffs. It's, it's expensive, it's high. Let the government look into it and bring down the tariffs because this is where the challenges are. The, the, and also the dollar. You know, the, the, the prices are constant, but here it keeps fluctuating. And so generally, that is why the business is not um, favorable to us because um, the money you used to buy a car you sold yesterday, you have to add more money to buy another one tomorrow. So it's, it's not too good for the business. They, however, urged the federal government to address the challenges associated with car importation in order to ensure that the sector remains afloat. Medical practitioners have identified major causes of convulsion among children and how it can be avoided or managed. Dr. Martins Mosheri and Dr. Ifai Ajufo who spoke with Trust TV in Asaba said that convulsion in children can be caused by severe malaria, meningitis, effects from an injury in the brain, among other issues. According to them, using spoon or any other object is really not going to make any difference. He advised parents to seek for proper medical treatment for their children. It comes to either an external or internal problem. A child that is three years old, that was playing and suddenly started convulsing could be as a result of so many factors. The first is we look at our environment and find out what could have been the cause of convulsion in a three-year-old child. Um, if we say malaria, yes, it's possible because when the temperature of the body rises above some certain normal, the body tends to react especially when the thermoregulatory system in the brain has been altered. Convulsion is commoner in children because there are some, the causes are numerous and there's one particularly that occurs in children which we call fever convulsion. You can see an adult or even a child above six years convulsing, having, it's not common, it's not common for a child above that, above six years to have fever convulsion. What is the commonest convulsion among children is 
favorite conversion. You see them jerking, most times it's generalized, tonic, clonic, or you, you can see it. And the, the cause, as the name suggests, fibra means the body is hot. As the body is, gets hot, it triggers firing because just the brain firing, abnormal uh, increased firing, discharge of the brain, sending signals to the muscles. So at the end of the day, you see the muscles jerking. West African leaders have restated their commitment to the entrenchment of democracy democratic system of government as a prerequisite for sustainable economic development. A communique on Sunday at the end of the 63rd session of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the Economic Community of West African States established a link between maintenance of peace and security and harmonious coexistence and socio-economic development of the region. Kendi Amodu reports. Tough words from the new ECOWAS chairman sets the tone for agreements reached during the one-day summit of West African leaders. We will work collectively to pursue inclusive economic integration of West Africa, the region. We should serve a warning to exploiters that our people have suffered enough. There are real concerns about the speed of implementation of transition processes in Mali, Burkina Faso and the Republic of Guinea. The authority particularly underscored its dis disapproval or its displeasure at the what appears to be lack of collaboration on the part of the transitional uh, authorities as exemplified by the inability of the three mediators to visit these countries before the summit. Aside from democracy, the ECOWAS leaders are very concerned about the rate of insecurity in West Africa, which seems to be worsening. On the fight against terrorism, the heads of state expressed serious concern about the worsening security situation in the region, occasioned by the recurrence and expansion of activities of terrorist groups and their humanitarian consequences. They reiterated collective commitment towards the eradication of terrorism and violent extremism. In particular, the authority strongly urges for the operationalization of the regional standby force urgently. The summit also discussed progress being made in the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, the ECOA Single Currency Program, and the report on obstacles to free movement of goods on the Abidjan-Lagos Corridor. Reviewing the President's participation at the ECOA Summit in Guinea-Bissau, Kainde Amudu, Trust TV News. Now, on the foreign scene, the president of Mauritania, Mohamed Al Sheikh, called for the return of Mali to the G5 Sahel organization. Mali left the regional military alliance fighting insurgents groups in May last year, citing loss of autonomy and instrumentalization within the organization. The appeal took place in the Mauritania capital at the opening of the fourth session of the General Assembly of the Sahel Alliance, a platform of 27 bilateral partners and donors set up to mobilize international aid for the development of the region. The junta that has ruled Mali since 2020 has broken with France and its allies turning to Russia for help. Mauritania, a vast, mostly desert country with a population of 4.5 million, has not seen any attacks since 2011. Abia state government confirmed former Arsenal striker Kanu Wako as Aimba of Abbas' new chairman. Kanu replaces Felix Anyansi Agu, who led the club for 24 years. Governor Alex Oti dissolved the Aimba board, led by Anyansi Agu, shortly after the Nigerian Premier Football League Championship playoff, which the People's 
elephant want to become the 2022-2023 league champions. Kanu 46 is expected to lead AIMA to success in both the CAF Champions League and the 2023-2024 Seasons League and the Federation Cup competitions, which his predecessor won on several occasions. As AIMA chairman, the former Iwanyao national star will work with his Ajax Amsterdam former teammate, Finidi George, who is the club's coach. Both players were part of Louis Van, uh, Louis Van Gaal's uh, team, which won the UEFA Champions League in 1995. And that's a wrap on the news updates. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.